everyone. This is Yeshua said my name. Who is the queen of heaven? And where did this start actually within the Catholic church calling Mary the queen of heaven? We have to go all the way back to uh, the ancient uh, pagan religions to find the answer for this. Actually, Tammuz and Ashtoreth and Astarte, uh, the mother and child uh, that's depicted in pagan cultures, all has to do with this. And I'm going to give you a link to a, an article that I'm reading here that will describe more of this phenomenon to you and exactly what it means according to the Catholic religion. Uh, who is the queen of heaven? Now, Mary is called the queen of heaven, although when Jesus walked the earth, he never called his mother the queen of anything. As a matter of fact, when Mary was approached by the angel to tell her that she was to conceive by the power of the Holy Spirit, the Messiah, she said, my soul rejoices in God, my Savior. And in order to need a Savior, you need to know that you're a sinner, correct? Never did Mary claim to be a queen. Never did Jesus or the Father or the Holy Spirit appoint Mary to be a queen. She is blessed among women, yes, because she carried the Messiah. I will not deny that. But Mary was never here in this world to be prayed to, to be an intercessor for us, to be venerated and worshiped, or to be called the queen of heaven. And again, I've gone over numerous times in this channel how the Vatican, according to Revelation 17 and 18, and even the book of Daniel, prophesied that it would one day include pagan traditions and pagan religions, but then be wrapped in a cloak of Christianity. Satan appears as an angel of light, and so do his messengers of right. Uh, so do his messengers appear as messengers of righteousness. So the answer to this is the phrase "the Queen of Heaven" appears in the Bible both times in the Book of Jeremiah. So in the Jer uh, Book of Jeremiah, God speaks to the Israelites and says, "You're baking cakes to the Queen of Heaven, and this has provoked me to wrath." So the very fact that the Israelites, according to the prophet Jeremiah, uh, when he was spoken to by the Holy Spirit of God, provoked God to wrath by baking these cakes to a supposed queen of heaven. And many referred to her as Ashtoreth uh, or as Astarte. Um, Astarte was pretty big with the uh, ancient Egyptians. So the phrase queen of heaven appears in the Bible twice in the book of Jeremiah. The first incident is in connection with things like the Israelites, it said, and what they were doing to provoke the Lord to anger. Entire families were literally involved, it says. The children would collect wood and men used it to build altars to worship false gods. The women were engaged in kneading dough and baking cakes for the queen of heaven. And you can find this in Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 18. This title referred to Ishtar, an Assyrian Babylonian goddess. Now, this Ishtar uh, is, you know, comes from Babylon, and in Revelation 17 and 18, it states clearly that modern-day Vatican City State is Mystery Babylon. So this is where you're getting some of this Queen of Heaven theology coming from. This is nowhere found in Scripture that Mary is to be prayed to, that she's an intercessor, or that she is elevated to the same uh, status on sitting on a throne in heaven as queen next to Jesus, who is the king of the universe. All right. Never does it say this in scripture ever. I, I want chapter and verse of this. OK. And again, some people make it frustrated with my channel because I use scripture as my final authority. I don't go on opinion and I don't go on what a pastor says from a pulpit or a book or a movie or anybody else for that matter. If it's not in the word of God and you can't prove it or substantiate it by scripture, then I don't like, even like to entertain such a thing. So my final authority is the scriptures. And if you can find chapter and verse for me, please, where it says Mary is the queen of heaven, that she is to be prayed to and venerated, that she is a co-mediatrix with Christ, who is our only mediator, I need to see this. All right, so the Babylonian goddess was called Ashtoreth um, and some Astarte by others groups. She was thought to be the wife of the false god Baal, also known as Moloch. Now, of course, the, the god Moloch is also venerated and worshipped in the Bohemian Grove. And if you're not, not familiar with Bohemian Grove, a lot of government officials gather together there each year behind secret closed parameters and do a mock sacrifice to this god Moloch. That's another video for another time. The motivation of women to worship Ashtoreth stemmed from her reputation as a fertility goddess. And as the bearing of children was greatly desired among women, that era worship this queen of heaven was rampant among pagan civilizations. Sadly, it became popular amongst the Israelites as well. That's why you see in ancient pagan Babylonian religions, 
this image or idols, graven images of a woman holding a child in her lap. And to this day, what you see uh, in Catholic churches and in the Vatican all over the world is that same graven stone image of a woman holding a child in her lap. And the Bible in Revelation 17 calls modern day Vatican City, Mystery Babylon. It incorporates these Babylonian practices into something, into its own theologies and calls itself Christian, Christianity. It's not. Uh, the second reference to the queen of heaven you can find if you turn to Jeremiah chapter 40, um, 44, starting in verse 17 and go to verse 25, where Jeremiah is giving the people the word of the Lord, which God has spoken to him. And he reminds the people of their disobedience of idolatry and sacrificing to uh, this Babylonian goddess who they call the, the queen of heaven. Now, when you go to um, a Catholic mass and you see people lighting a candle at the feet of the virgin and her holding the child, this is worship. People in uh, pagan times back in even Babylon and even other pagan religions would light candles at the feet of their God or their graven image that they worshiped. So not only is the image of the mother and child uh, a graven image of idolatry showing this Astarte or Ashtoreth holding the child, but it's uh, Nimrod. It's also sh uh, modern day showing this. And when you light a candle at the base of her feet, it is no different than the pagans and what they did thousands of years ago, lighting candles at the feet of their so-called gods slash graven images. There is no queen of heaven, the article goes on to say. There has never been a queen of heaven. There is most certainly a king of heaven the Lord Jesus Christ, and he alone rules heaven and earth. Jesus said before he left this world, all power is given to me in heaven and on earth. And he is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. For Mary to claim the title of a queen or anyone to give her that title is saying that she is on par in authority and power along with the King of heaven, who is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, the Lord Jesus Christ. This is not scriptural. This is nowhere found in scripture. He alone rules, he rules heaven and earth. He does not share his rule or throne with any authority. As a matter of fact, God even says in the scriptures, I will sh share my glory with no one else. I will share my glory with no one else. He alone is king of kings. He never appointed a queen to sit with him, especially not his mother. That is nowhere found in scripture. As a matter of fact, even the closest thing we can come to this is... Uh, is when Jesus comes back for his bride, the church, and it says his, the wife of the lamb will rule and reign with Christ on the earth. Now, even then, it's not calling us a queen. It's saying that we're the bride of Christ, that we're the wife of the lamb, and he is blessing us with being able to judge the world and judge angels. He is blessing us with the age to come to rule and reign with him. Um. Down at the bottom here of this article, it says here, furthermore, Jesus himself issued a mild rebuke to a woman who cried out to him, blessed is the mother who gave birth to you and nursed you, Luke eleven twenty seven. So she was trying to put attention onto Jesus' mother. Replying to her, Jesus said, blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and obey it. Put your focus on me, Jesus is saying, not on my mother. And later on, he went on to say, who are my mother and brothers? He could cert Jesus could have answered and said, yes, hail Mary, queen of heaven, hail my mother. Everybody pray to her and look to her for your intercession and for blessings and your protectress and your co-mediatrix. He never said that. And neither did any of the other scriptures. So I'll put the link to this article down below. It has a lot of other scriptures for you, for those of you who may be interested in researching these things. And my prayer and hope is that those of you who are listening to this channel and hearing these things possibly for the first time, that you will not ignore what you're hearing, but you'll be up for the challenge to search the scriptures yourselves to see if what is being taught here about this queen of heaven is true according to the scriptures. When Paul visited Berea, he spoke to the Bereans and the Bereans didn't just take Paul at his word. They looked in the scriptures to see if what Paul was saying was true. And then the scriptures themselves, they didn't just take what he was saying. So please, let's not just look at theology books and catechisms and what a priest or a pastor says or the Pope in Rome. Are you reading the scriptures, which is your final and only true authority for the heart of God and how you are to believe and live your life? Yes or no? 
Thank you and uh, more to come soon.